okay here we go this is going to be cardiology and uh, before starting the lecture i want to tell you certain things neither me nor anybody in the whole world can cover the entire cardiology in couple of hours it's going to take a while i'm really sorry again for post preponing the lecture actually i thought of taking the lecture actually on 7th only but uh, <clears throat> on 7th i'll be with some examiners actually i'm not an examiner i'm just a surrogate there is a paces exam going to happen so i'm just going along with some of my examiners so just we are going to have some discussion and there is a meet as well for because i hope you are all you all are aware that uh, paces format is going to change now it's going to be paces 23 so for that some meet is going on over there new format what's going to happen and all this stuff so i can't miss out that so that's the reason i wanted to brief on this and my sincere apologies for that it will be a little tough for you some of you guys to like back to back learn cardiology and neurology same time but i hope we can make it actually interesting and we will make it as much <clears throat> understandable and for you like and also my main aim for this lecture is not just to make you mug up anything but to make you understand the concepts because if you guys understand the concept behind anything then everything is simple if you don't know the concept then you will go stammer around then just confuse yourself and obviously some people will end up confusing others okay shall we go i am going to start with the very first topic that is congenital heart disease i know like a lot of you are aware of what is a congenital heart disease though it's called congenital many of the heart disease will be present only in the adult age group not everything will present in the congenital age or like in an infant or in a newborn or in the young child so congenital heart disease is a very important topic not just for part one for part two for paces this is going to come to you so first thing for congenital heart disease, anything, what is congenital? It's from birth. You divide it into two types. First is asynotic, cyanotic. What is a cyanosis? I hope you all are aware. It's bluish discoloration. For it is occurring because of decreased oxygen. So the skin turns blue. Where you will find cyanosis, I hope many of you will know. You can find acrocyanosis in extremities. You can find Cyanosis in lips, under the tongue, everywhere you can find it. So, cyanotic heart disease, we basically classify into the ones with shunts and ones without shunts. And acyanotic heart disease, this heart disease does not produce any kind of cyanosis. They again classified into with shunt and without shunt. Now, how to easily remember that cyanosis, cyanotic heart diseases? If you have any doubt, just remember one word that is T. Tetralogy of phallet, T. Transposition of great vessels, again T. Tricuspid atresia, again T. This, all these T's are cyanosis, cyanotic heart diseases. And Epstein anomaly, this is another cyanotic heart disease and sometimes pulmonary stenosis again this is a cyanotic heart disease don't get worried about all these names we are going to see the very important cyanotic heart disease so just relax and learn and just stay awake don't relax and fall asleep because cardiology is a vast subject and there are acyanotic heart disease if you take atrial septal defect ventricular septal defect these are called acyanotic heart disease pattern ductus arteriosus anomalous venous drainage coarctation of iota every single thing we are going to see every single condition we are going to see what is going to happen and we will try to cover up as much as possible okay no now the first thing whose turn i don't know i want one of you all of you to listen and who is so sure of what is this murmur i want you to type in the chat box what murmur is this just listen okay People with headphones, you can listen directly on the headphones. People with stethoscope, put your stethoscope over the headphones and listen. You will actually feel like you are auscultating a 
patient. These murmurs are not taken from YouTube. These are taken from actual patients using an electronic stethoscope. Okay, you will get the actual sound effect of what you are actually listening to the patient's heart. Okay, now here we go. Anybody come on, come on again. I will play. What murmur is this? Then we will see a case history. Then we are going to see the very first condition. Come on, yeah. Somebody type. Is it a systolic murmur or is it diastolic murmur? What murmur is this? This much you should know. Is this a systolic or a diastolic murmur? Oh my God, sound is not, are you guys not able to hear anything? Okay. I don't understand what's happening here. My sound must have been shared to you all. My sound is full from my end guys. I don't know really what's happening here. Just a second. It was audible before. Now it's audible or not? Can anyone tell me? Is it audible now? No. Just check this. Anyone? Mm -hmm. Just a second, guys. Just wait. My sound should go to you guys. I don't know. Share computer sound. Yeah. Now can you hear? Now you can now you guys can hear? Yes, 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 yes. Now come back and tell me is it a systolic murmur or a diastolic murmur? What murmur is this? Come on, we have a lot to learn. Somebody come. No one wants to answer. Uh oh, all right. Okay, here is the case history. Now at least you should be able to find. See, the first case is, this is something, oh, sorry. This is something you will typically See in your MRCP1 and MRCP2, you will get a similar scenario. So I have taken RCP scenario. A 45 year old woman is coming. Okay. Treatment of frequent palpitations. Like I said to you, how to prepare for how to like approach an MCQ palpitation. Okay. The patient did well through the first two decades of life. In her mid 20s, she noticed she becomes slightly short of breath with exertion. Just read carefully. She has been seen twice in the hospital emergency department for atrial tachyarrhythmias. Her left ventricular impulse is normal. Okay. For she has been seen for what? Atrial tachyarrhythmias. Okay. She has been seen for atrial tachyarrhythmia. Who's asking? I have an echo. Yeah, yeah. A lot of echocardiography is there. Don't worry. I'll show you. Her right ventricular impulse is 2 plus. She has 2, 6 ejection systolic murmur at the left upper sternal border. The murmur radiates to her back and you may get one more finding plus this. I'll tell you a wide split S2. What is the diagnosis? Come on. Come on, guys. Type, it's an interactive session. It's not, I am going to sit and talk here. There's no point in doing that. Me sitting and reading slides. Excellent. ASD, who's the first doctor? Dr. Muhammad. Fantastic. This is an ASD. This is a very common condition you will get for your MRCP part one. Okay. It's one of the most common cause for right heart dilatation. And second important point you should know about ASD is 
it's typically a left to right shunt that is oxygenated to deoxygenated left side of your heart is always oxygenated the right side is deoxygenated like i said you can find a wide split second heart sound this stem you will find in your questions many a times wide split second heart sound and one more thing i will tell you many of the asd people will be asymptomatic will be asymptomatic in early years okay many of the people they will be asymptomatic in their early years but in the later time what will happen is they will now can you are you hearing an echo doctor are you hearing an echo somebody said when you speak there is an echo from your sound um echo sound for me are you hearing an echo now or is it better okay okay that's perfect no problem we are here to help okay so, like i said that's why most of the asds are found incidentally many times asd won't be showing up so they will be you will be finding the asd incidentally and asd like you heard there will be a esm esm is what ejection systolic murmur this is due to the shunt between left atrium and right atrium i'll show pictures don't worry i'll show pictures i'll show echocardiography so that you will understand now when it comes to complications of asd you should know pulmonary hypertension can happen and eisenmenger syndrome eisenmenger syndrome is nothing other than shunt reversal i will show you the pictures and i will explain you this also and then here one more point i want you to learn is this ostium primum defect of asd will show lbb pattern because in mcq they will ask you or in real life also if you find a asd patient and he is having a left bundle branch block pattern i hope you know what is a left bundle branch block because we don't have time to teach all those things at least you should be knowing what is lbb if left bundle branch block pattern you are seeing it is an ostium primum defect come i'll tell you this is a murmur of ast okay there is a mid systolic ejection murmur typically it will be heard in pulmonary area and loud p2 can be heard if the pulmonary hypertension sets in. rarely you will get tricuspid flow murmur this is about the murmur in asd there are other things you should know this is a atrial septal defect okay certain basics i want you guys to know this is a right atrium this is a left atrium this is a right ventricle this is a left ventricle clear right atrium is connected with ivc and svc left atrium is connected by what pulmonary veins left ventricle is connected to iota and right ventricle is connected to pulmonary artery this you know what happens in asd now you should know that in the left atrium and right atrium has a shunt an opening as a result this red color oxygenated blood will keep coming to your right atrium so what happens right atrium will have a now an extra load this load will go to the right ventricle now right ventricle will have little load or more load of blood of course more load of blood this more load of blood in the right ventricle will go where obviously ultimately to the pulmonary artery that is why you are getting what pulmonary hypertension pulmonary congestion everything you will get simple as that learn concepts i hope you understand now clearly this is basics simply understand you understand these things nothing is big deal in cardiology you can crack it through see there are two types of asd i said primum this is a second mast there is a sinus venous defect this is how it is you don't need to understand all the pathology but you should know how these conditions presents clinically that's what royal college wants you to know they are not going to dig you into pathology like what you will see all those things like no now certain points about the defect sinus venous defect if you are seeing a sinus venous defect it is located typically in the superior part okay and it can be superior sinus venous inferior sinus venous that you need not know one point you should know is this ostium secundum defect it is located in the mid septum called fossa ovalis it's the most common almost 75% of the asds are ostium secundum defect okay this one point you should know 
then an osteum primer it is located in the lower part okay three things you should know sinus venosus defect it is located in the upper part superior osteum primum lower part mid septum you will get osteum secundum defects now you see this picture you will understand okay secundum is in the mid septum primum lower part see you can find primum in the lower part sinus venosus defect in the upper part that's why we divided sinus venosus into superior and inferior types i hope you understand i hope you all of you got it okay now who asked the echocardiography now for that particular doctor and all the doctors here you can see a lot of echo and you don't need to know all the echo but i pulled in all the images because like i said my aim is not just to make you just work out mcqs you should come out as a better clinicians okay this is a apical four chamber view what you are seeing is an osteum primum defect now i hope you guys should be telling me where is osteum primum defect is it in the upper mid or lower i hope you know you now you are seeing is osteum primum here is another echocardiography okay this is parasternal short axis view see the right ventricle it's enlarged i told you why right ventricle is enlarged left ventricle pumps more blood to right atrium right atrium so pumps more blood to the right ventricle it is enlarged and apical four chamber view again it is demonstrating right ventricular enlargement here again it is enlarged this is a typical finding you will see in ast and ecg this they may not ask you but in the odd time if they are going to ask you you should know something called prohetage sign i don't know how to spell that some of the english names are difficult anyways you will find nothing other than a notch near the apex of the r wave especially in the inferior leads this is one of the signs of asd and like i said left bundle branch block you will also find in asd now management asd thankfully there is not much management you guys should know like that of a heart failure or anything mostly this will be taken care by ctvs people cardiothoracic vascular surgeon people but they will ask you at what point of time this patient has to go to a ctvs team that is cardiothoracic vascular surgery team if it has to be referred the patient has to be referred if qp by qs what is qp by qs qp is pulmonary qs systemic qp is the ratio qp is to qs is ratio between the pulmonary system pulmonary to systemic blood flow if it is more than 1.5 you are going to surgery and right atrial enlargement surgery then <clears throat> any arrhythmia or any pulmonary vascular disease or pulmonary obstruction you go for surgery so they will give you a scenario this patient presented with asd is qp by qs is 0.9 you will go for surgery no if it is 2 yes you will go for a surgery if the patient already developed right atrial enlargement yes you will go for surgery if the patient develops any kind of fatal arrhythmia yes you will go for surgery okay i hope asd is clear now listen to this murmur at least someone should tell me what murmur is this please i collected all this hot sounds for you from various sources someone is going to tell me what murmur is this at least is it a systolic murmur or a diastolic murmur at least that level someone should answer anybody again can anybody tell that silence somebody replied wow nice 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 who is replying see that's why i'm not just playing the sound i'm not just playing the sound i am giving you a phonocardiogram see here uh, yeah one minute 
yeah this is the case history if you see this phonocardiogram see what you can see this is s1 sorry s1 s2 there is a murmur between this s1 and s2 what is this and some people have confusion between systolic murmur and diastolic murmur okay i am here to clarify it because you guys are going to become internal medicine practitioners and none of you after listening to this should go with so go with the confusion between systolic and a diastolic murmur two minutes i am going to take don't worry about the length of time even if it is going to take another six hours i am ready to sit and teach everything you guys need to know okay first thing to know what is a systolic murmur and diastolic murmur you should know what is s1 and what is s2 see without any hesitancy i will tell you i was not a good person i was not a good student or a good cardiologist i mean like not good in cardiology i had so much of hesitation i used to remember this sound that sound okay if it, the sound comes like whoosh or if the sound comes like tup tup it is diastolic if it coming like whoosh it is a systolic earlier i used to be like that but then i learned there is nothing wrong in learning okay you can learn you should know what is s1 and you should know what is s2 if you have a doubt just palpate your carotid artery okay palpate your carotid artery the sound that corresponding to the carotid is s1 okay the uh, the sound that lup which you are getting along with your carotid pulse is s1 the one which you are getting after that is s2 just know this basic what is s1 and s2 anything between s1 and s2 is systolic anything after s2 is diastolic simple as that guys no need to read any complex theories just palpate your own carotids keep your stethoscope at your apex and listen just to know the basics okay with this murmur comes this case history now comes a 58 year old man who has received tpa for anterior myocardial infraction what is tpa plasminogen activator i hope you guys know okay suddenly he develops what you know dyspnea and left ventricular failure and a systolic murmur is heard loudest at the left sternal edge and echocardiography color flow doppler reveals left to right shunt what is the diagnosis here some guy some brilliant doctors got it already one doctor i think dr mohammed excellent fantastic he told the diagnosis rupture of what doctor excellent that's a vst vst is the most common congenital heart disease okay this picture i don't need to explain you there is a septal defect between the two ventricles okay septal defect between the two ventricles post myocardial infarction it is very common this murmur which you heard is a pan systolic murmur yes that's a pan systolic murmur because this is s1 this is s2 because in your question stem they will give you pan systolic murmur it will be throughout okay this is the pan systolic murmur and it's a harsh pan systolic murmur you will hear in a vst and the left sternal edge be very very careful in the same post mi scenario they will give another scenario that there is a pan systolic murmur post mi just listen to me very carefully post mi there is a pan systolic murmur that is louder at the apex what will be your diagnosis come on somebody type 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 come who got it post mi pan systolic murmur loudest at the apex yes that's an mr mitral regurgitation due to papillary muscle dysfunction fantastic okay about vst it's a left to right shunt again and the left ventricle contracts you know that and i am going to tell you three important points here which you guys should know small vst moderate vst large vst 
and always remember the small VSD is the loudest. As the defect becomes big, pulmonary hypertension will set in and the murmur will become soft. An Eisenmenger complex reversal of shunt can happen. Just know one thing, the loudest is the murmur, the defect is small. And when the murmur turns soft, then the defect is large. You're getting it? I hope you guys got it. Okay. Yeah. Other classification is perimembranous muscular. I'm giving the slide to you. This thing you can read, not an issue. This is an echocardiographic image of VST, ventricular septal defect. You can find Doppler. If you want to see an actual echocardiography, somebody asked about echocardiogram. This is an echocardiogram. One of a guy I know tried to mark it as much as possible. That is an aortic valve. Here is a mitral valve. And yeah, I'll tell you VST. Yeah, that's the VST. That's a septal defect. You can watch this entire echocardiography later. You will just move on. Again, another echocardiography, aortic valve, pulmonary trunk. You can watch it. Now comes to the important part, management. How you will manage this VST? VST management is again straightforward. It is same like that of ASD. If QP by Q is more than 1.5 is to 1, or a perimembranous or a supracrystal VST causing a aortic regurgitation, then it's surgery. Or even if you find a heart failure symptoms, surgery. In case of Eisenmenger complex, what happens in an Eisenmenger complex is, see, this is the left side of the heart, it's a right side of the heart. Typically, shunt goes in this direction. If the shunt reversal happens, from the right to left it occurs. In that case, what you should do? The first line is always going to be supportive therapy, guys. If they ask you in MCQ, what is the first line therapy? It's always supportive. With supportive with what? Pulmonary vasodilators like bosentan, sorry, CN, bosentan, sildenafil, all epoprosterinol. These drugs, you know the mechanism of this, a mechanism of action of these drugs. This is an acts on endothelin, phosphodiesterase, prostonoids okay in case of severe heart failure in case of eisenmenger syndrome the only thing you can do is heart transplantation heart lung transplantation always remember severe eisenmenger heart lung, heart lung transplantation and surgery criteria in case of asd or in case of uh, uh, sorry in case of any ar or in case of qpqs more than 1.5 is 1.5 is to 1 or in case of any endocarditis or in case of any heart failure symptoms, you are going to go for a surgery. Now comes to the third case. Now listen to the murmur and tell me what is this. Anybody got it? This murmur has a peculiar quantity, quality. I mean like a peculiar sound this has. Okay. Here is the case history. Let's see the case quickly. This is a typically they will tell you a premature boy. Will they ask about uh, pediatric questions in MRCP? Yes, when it comes to congenital heart disease, they had asked previously. Okay. With early diastolic murmur, where it starts? AR. No, it's not AR. Definitely not. This murmur has a typical quantity, quality. Okay. It's treated with appropriate doses of surfactant. Now, itself you should know. However, on the second day, this infant has a respiratory distress syndrome. Okay. I'll tell you the important. He also demo started demonstrating apneic smells. And he also has a wide pulse pressure, an infant. Okay. Blood is towards this and all. And he has a bounding pulse. And he has a grade 3 systolic. Ejection murmur can be heard on left infraclavicular area. What is the diagnosis? An infant presenting with this murmur. In MRCP stem, if you are lucky, they will give you a clue. They will give you a clue called, sorry, machinery murmur. Because this murmur sounds like as if an engine or some machine is going to start. Obviously, got it PDA. 
simple as that pda okay what is a pda it's a communication between proximal left pulmonary artery and descending aorta i'll show the picture i'll show the picture i'll draw the picture also if you guys want it's again a left to right shunt normally this closes normally this closes okay because once the lungs started functioning this pulmonary artery resistance will start to come down but in some patients it can be the clues are bounding pulse and a missionary murmur keep listening to the murmur again and again no problem you will find a missionary note to it a typical mission starting note to it. and again same like vsd the murmur sound will diminish your pulmonary hypertension develop small device it will close eventually otherwise you will go for a surgical ligation or percutaneous catheter closure that nobody will ask you okay see this is a persistent opening pulmonary artery is there and the iota is there there is a persistent connection this is a pda straight forward one now comes to another murmur who is going to tell me what murmur is this okay this is again another story about an infant this is a systolic murmur i'll tell you one day old infant okay uncomplicated delivery that infant is coming okay the baby is otherwise well pulse oximetry everything but on auscultation s1 is normal and s2 is single systolic ejection murmur can be heard who is going to diagnose and tell me if you can't diagnose i'll give you another case okay another case a recent paces scenario okay you are seeing a 28 year old male <clears throat> everybody listen you are hearing a 28 year old male he has clubbing he appears cyanosed especially in his lips and inside his mouth oral cavity okay you are hearing two murmurs one pan systolic murmur in lower left sternal border getting it another systolic murmur in pulmonary area what is the diagnosis guys come on don't disappoint me somebody should answer this stuff excellent dr mohammed you are on the money you know the basics 100% that's tough you know a lot of people they just diagnosed this as something and something which was not lot of people ended up telling you know this as <laughs> i can't believe some people were started telling in the entire exam what are all diagnoses they gave some i don't want to like talk on that but literally this is a tough Tough, they will keep you in older age also. Sometimes they may correct it, and still you will hear this murmur. You can find in a paces exam or anything, you can find a scar, but you can still hear the murmur. It's an actual patient I have seen just four days max, four days before, four days before. Tetral jephalet, yes, you can find. What is a tetral jephalet? tetralogy means four what are the component number one overriding iota you see the iota overrides right ventricular outflow obstruction can be seen and ventricular septal defect that's the one that gives psm okay right fundibular ventricular outflow obstruction that will give a systolic murmur again and right ventricular hypertrophy this is a classical tough okay and tough pathophysiology you need not know that is that may be overwhelming for you guys i'm just rushing it through but when it comes to tough you guys should know certain things on tough the four components of tough what are the murmurs you will get in tough and cyanosis you will get and also i forgot to tell one more thing about the yeah clubbing i mentioned yeah you can find clubbing all those things you will be fine so tetralogy of fallot is a congenital condition in babies you call it as a blue baby syndrome because i will never forget the 28 year old guy was still cyanosis i could still find some residual cyanosis in that guy in that case like no one not a single person even including me i couldn't typically get that single s2 
but uh, diagnosis for like uh, turned actually funny in the later time pulmonic stenosis can be there and there will be increased thickening of the right ventricle ventricular septal defect will be there overriding aorta will be there the s2 will be single the s2 will typically split into what a2 p2 s2 is what the aortic and pulmonic wall closure it used to be two different it used to be a split it's a two different event but here you will find a single event there will be a diamond shaped murmur you can find and uh, again ventricular septal defect murmur everything like i said that's mentioned over here and there will be something called death spells that is cyanotic spells you will get only thing i want to tell you is when you get a cyanotic spell what can be done is if anything that can be done like squatting or any resistant thing then it will improve the touch spell will improve that's why when the kids get that get those spells pediatrician you can find them advising them to just like squat just sit they will feel better okay and one more thing this digerge syndrome this came as an mcq for mrcp way back this digerge syndrome is found in 15 percent of people with tough what is a digerge syndrome anybody knows the other components of digerge syndrome what will be absent there or what will be in fault which other organ will be fault in digerge syndrome anybody come on come on type 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 we have a lot to learn what you will find in digerge syndrome doctors come on What you will find in digest? Nobody wants to reply. <clears throat> I want you guys to read on that. That's your homework. Yes, yes, somebody is coming. Okay, what organ will be absent or like hypofunction in digest syndrome? Okay, now comes um, just a second. It's an echocardiography. It's an echocardiography of tetralogy of phthalate. I'll show you. Yeah, here you find a ventricular septal defect. <clears throat> there is a pulmonary stenosis. Here, if you go, there will be an iota that is overriding. That's a right ventricular hypertrophy, right ventricular thickening. That's how. The tetralogy of phthalate will present. Okay. Now comes to another condition. Now again, tell me what murmur is this? Okay. Here is the history. A fifty-two-year-old obese white man. Okay. A 52-year-old obese white man is coming to you with increasing fatigue. His fatigue is increased and there is an exertional dyspnea. Okay? Fatigue is increasing. Dyspnea is ex ex dyspnea on exertion. He has been well until 5 months. Okay? The patient has a history of dyslipidemia. His hypertension was poorly controlled. Combination of antihypertensive agents, all the beta blocker has been added, ARB is added and still the blood pressure is 140 by 90. I'm sorry for like cramping of the lecture. I had no other go. Otherwise, I would be like losing up some stuff. That's why I had to cramp all these things now. Again, tomorrow we are going to learn. Tomorrow also we will learn more things, more new things, more videos, more patients, more stuff. We are going to learn tomorrow as well. That will be also beneficial for all of us. So, I hope to see you all tomorrow. And once I'm like after my endocrine lecture, I'll be a little free. I'm planning to take one more session for you guys to like how to prepare in the last moment. And some of you have questions regarding like moving to UK, what are the options, what things to do, what not to do. I'll be helping out with you guys for that also. And I hope this thing went well. <clears throat> all the best for you. Study really well, revise everything, and then go through a couple of MCQs. And tomorrow we will see for neuro lecture. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye bye. See you. Good night or good morning or good evening.
doesn't matter which part of the world you are in. Take care. Bye-bye. See you guys.